I'm not even kidding right now, as we have gotten a new open source model that is better than Gemma 3. Yes, better than Gemma 3, which is Google's open weight model that was just released this past week. It outperformed GPT-4 Omni, and it was a super lightweight model with only 27 billion parameters for its model size. But now we have another new model that's even better than Gemma 3, and it's even smaller. Allow me to introduce Mistral Small 3.1. Mistral is finally back again with a new state-of-the-art model that is under the Apache 2.0 license that also is multimodal and it is multilingual. It's roughly in the same ballpark as Gemma 327 b but slightly better and it beats GPT-4 Omni Mini and Claude 3.5 Haiku completely. Now Mistral Small 3.1 is a 24 billion parameter model that runs on a single RTX 4090 or a Mac OS which is approximately 32 gigabytes of RAM. This could be an ideal local chatbot that can be something that you can access right now and it has a 128k context window with a blazing fast 150 tokens per second in regards to its speed. It can now process a lot more in terms of understanding visual inputs as well as long documents which is further expanding its range of application. This Mistral 3.1 model was actually built on its predecessor the Mistral Small 3 model. But with this new model, it is a bit more versatile for tasks such as programming, math, reasoning, you have dialogue, long document understanding, visual understanding, summarization, and low latency application. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis, so this is where you can easily get up-to-date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. Now in regards to its performance, it is kind of impressive to see that such a lightweight model is able to outperform many of these big proprietary models like GPT-4 Omni Mini and Claude 3.5 Sonnet or sorry Haiku. And in this case, we can see that it leads in general knowledge. You have it so that it could demonstrate strong reasoning and problem solving capabilities. And with the multimodal capabilities, it is surprisingly better than GPT-4 Omni. And with multilingual support, it's able to support, I believe, 21 plus languages, which is really nice. It has long context, mastery, pre-trained performance with MMLU, GPQA, and so many other benchmarks. So overall, this is a great all-rounded model. And if you're looking for a high quality with a lightweight solution that is open source, this is definitely the best option that's available at the moment. Now, if you're looking to get started, you can easily use their chatbot called Lev Platform. And this is essentially Mistral's chatbot where you can easily work with the small 3.1 model. You can also install this locally through the Hugging Face model card. And then if you wanted to access it off of Google Cloud's Vertex AI, you can easily do so, open it in your notebook, and then you can actually fine tune it via uh, Google Cloud. Now, you also have the ability to access this off of a router like Open Router. Now, if you're looking to install this with Olama, unfortunately, you cannot do it at the moment because it's not uploaded yet. But once they do release the model card, you can easily access it through the model list over here, which will be shown at the top. You can simply click on that model card. This is just an example. Don't go ahead and install Gemma 3. But you can then copy the Mistral Small 3.1 model card, have Olama opened up and have it make sure it's running in the back end and then open up your command prompt. Simply paste in the model card uh, command to install it and then you can open it up within a web UI to start interacting with the small 3.1 model. Now for the next portion of the video, we're going to be assessing the Mistral Small 3.1 on a bunch of these different prompts from different categories from programming to creating different types of code, solving mathematical equations, and so much more. This is to get a better idea of how well this model is in different categories. So let's first start off by having it build out a web page using HTML and then have users uh, log their monthly expenses and income. We're trying to see how well this model is in terms of creating uh, various sorts of front ends and we're gonna see how well this model is in terms of programming based off the prompt that we have so let's go over to open router and send in this prompt so i actually had to go back and generate this once again because i had auto router on so i actually used the deep seek r1 with this model but afterwards i was able to generate this simple web page or a web app for the monthly budget tracker which looks pretty nice and this is actually more sleeker than what i got 
from Jamma3. And this is where I'm able to add the transaction, the income type, uh, expense or an income, and then you can add a salary, and then you can add the amount and then the description, and then you can track your recent transactions. Now there's a chart that was supposed to be generated, but it doesn't look like it's working right now. So I would need to go back and have it generate that. But essentially this is the basic app that I had requested and it did get the job done. So let's go over and give this a pass. I was really surprised to see the code generation for this model. So really impressed by that. Next up, since this model is a multimodal model, we're gonna be assessing this image over here. We're sending it in and asking it to detect the red car. We're trying to see how many red cars are in the image and there's actually only one. So let's see how many cars it actually ends up detecting. And you can see it was pretty quick. It was able to detect one red car. So let's go over and actually provide something a bit more intricate. Here's a different prompt. We're gonna have it describe this image over here. And since this model is pretty quick, it'll respond with a pretty nice response within a couple seconds, which you see over here. It talks about the image featuring a dog standing in a forested area during winter, which is definitely correct. You can see there's snow on the floor and it's in a forest. And then it also is talking about describing the dog itself, medium sized breed with brown and white coat. It's looking directly at the camera. So it does a pretty good job in describing the scene. So I'm kind of impressed by that. It does a pretty great job for that. So let's go over and give this a pass. Next up, we're gonna have it create an SVG representation of a butterfly. Now this is a prompt that most models tend to fail at, but let's see if this model is capable of generating a symmetrical butterfly with simple styling as well as wings. It's assessing how well the model is in generating SVG code. So I've copied the code and let's go over to this online SVG viewer to see what it generated. And it generated a box. It didn't even generate the actual butterfly. And I don't know why it didn't even, this was actually the worst generation I've ever gotten for a butterfly in SVG. Let me go back and reprompt this. All right, so I got another generation from Open Router. I copied it and it does not look good at all. This does not look like a butterfly and unfortunately, I'm giving this the worst generation of an SVG representation of a butterfly. I've never seen any model output something like this. So unfortunately, this is a fail. Even Gemma 3 failed at this. So it's nothing too bad, but it's kind of disappointing. Next up, we're having it solve this equation over here for solving for x and it's a quadratic formula and we're trying to see how well this model is in terms of solving these different types of equations using quadratic formulas. So the answer is x providing uh, 3 as well as 1 and this is definitely deemed a pass. So in terms of math, it does a solid job. It's a basic question, but we'll be providing more difficult questions later on. Next up, we have a logical reasoning word problem. This is where I'm saying a farmer has 10 cows, 5 goats, and 2 chickens. Each cow gives 10 liters of milk daily. Each goat gives 3 liters, and the chickens do not produce milk. How much milk does the farmer collect in a week? Now, this is an assessment that is going to have the model process numerical information, the ability to multiply for real-world scenarios, and I'm trying to see if it's able to break it down, which I do see over here. And overall, the answer is 805 liters of milk in a week, which is definitely deemed a pass. It breaks it down into four different categories from daily milk production from cows, goats, the total production, and the weekly milk production. So this is definitely deemed a pass. The next prompt, I'm trying to have it break it down in three different segments. I wanted to focus on this bugged Python function and it is supposed to return a new list of containing only the even numbers from the original list, but it has a bug. So I'm trying to have it identify it and it does provide me the fixed code where it removes the else condition we see within the original code. It also was able to ensure the entire list is processed before returning. And I wanted to essentially provide the example structured output, which it did. It focused on the explanation and overall it had corrected the debugged or the bugged code and provided me a solution. So this is definitely deemed a pass. And this is actually a prompt that is pretty easy to solve, but it's a little difficult in terms of having it being resolved in most cases with other smaller base models. Now, this isn't something too crazy, but I'm asking it, if you put a bowl of water in freezing temperatures, what will happen? And I'm telling it to ex uh, expand on this further. It's a category of physics uh, in science, and I'm assessing the model's understanding of phase changes in water and basic temperature. Uh, it gets the temperature st stabilization correct. 
It focuses on the key concepts like expansion, cooling down, formation of ice, and it does get you the correct answer with a step-by-step -step process of why it happens and practical implications. So this is definitely deemed a pass. And lastly, we're going to ask it to read the following passage and then answer a question about it without reading. Alice went to the market, bought three apples, two bananas, and five oranges. She met her friend Sarah, who bought a loaf of bread and a bottle of milk. They went to the park, enjoyed their purchases. The question is, how many oranges did Alice buy? This is actually a prompt that is kind of difficult for a lot of models because it is focusing on comprehension as well as memory. And it tests the model's ability to retain information after reading this answer or the question quite quickly and it did provide me the correct answer which was five oranges so this is definitely deemed a pass now if i am to compare this with the jamma 3 results it got the exact same performance it got the same question wrong as jamma 3 but it provided a better answer in all these other cases so it's definitely a great all-rounded model it's even lighter than the Gemma 3 model and it's something that you can easily get started with today if you like this video and would love to support the channel you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different ai tools for free on a monthly basis plus daily ai news and exclusive content plus a lot more Overall, I'm just happy to see more open source models for beating proprietary models, which is just great to see. And we're starting to see faster models being released, which this is actually faster than the Gemma 3, as well as the GPT-4 Omni Mini. And in terms of benchmark performance, it does a great job in almost every category. So this is a great all-rounded model while being multimodal and multilingual. So I definitely recommend that you try this out with all the links in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the newsletter so that you can stay up to date with whatever is happening in the world of AI. Follow me on the Patreon, follow me on Twitter, and lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you'll truly benefit from. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.